she's a dog, she's a queen, she's a tantalizing teen, and Karen is her name. They call her Karen. At a party, she's a snobber and a rock and roll and bumper. Everybody's glad she came. Hey, that's Karen! She sets her hair with great precision. She has a favorite indoor sport. And by the light of television, she can even write a book report. There is no one greater north or south of the equator. Karen's always in a world. She's alarming but disarming and a really very charming modern girl. I've been invited to spend the holidays up at Ski Valley. Charlotte Burns' parents have a place up there. Wow, Ski Valley? That's the place where they make all those corny movies for the late show. <laughs> Her parents are up there now, and we're going to take a train up tomorrow and, and join them. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Oh, I can go, can't I? Well, honey, I don't know. You better ask your father. He's upstairs. Okay. Dad? Dad, can I go to Ski Valley? I can hear you, honey. Can you hear me now? Yes. What? Yes, I said yes. Oh, oh, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> Mother, Daddy said yes. That it was okay? Yes, oh, isn't this wonderful? What's, uh, what's this about Ski Valley? Oh, you said yes. Oh, I said no such thing. I can't go? Well, this is something we'll just have to discuss first. Well, you can always watch Ski Valley on the Late Show. <laughs> So sure, I like the idea of Karen running off to Ski Valley. You know how those resorts are over the holidays. Oh, all those boys. I'm just afraid it's a little too much for a high school sophomore. Anyway, it sounds like kind of an expensive trip. Well, they're having a special learn to ski week, and the rates are all reduced. Besides, Charlotte's parents have their own cabin. They'll be there to look after the girls. Well, I'm not too sure about that Charlotte. There's just something not quite solid about a 16-year-old girl who's had her face lifted. <laughs> she didn't have her face lifted, honey. She just had a beauty mark removed. I wonder what her folks are like. Well, you met them last month at parents' night. She's the one who lent the 24-cup percolator. <laughs> Dear, we've always been able to trust Karen. But we don't want to overprotect her. Yeah, I guess you're right. But let me tell her. It's a good change for a father to say something nice to a teenager. <laughs> Honey, I want to... Hey, what's going on in here? She's packing for Ski Valley. Well, uh, don't you think you're jumping the gun a little? Well, I, I just wanted to be ready in case you said yes. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, we've decided uh, to let you go. Oh, Daddy! Oh, you're the most wonderful Daddy in the whole world! Oh, you're old enough now. We can trust Oh, I gotta go, Charlotte. Oh. That's the way to pack. Daddy? Hmm? This whole pile is the junk she's not taking. <laughs> I can go, Charlotte. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, you'll love it up there, Karen. It is absolutely wild at vacation time. Oh, it's so great. Our cabin's right near the lodge, and skiers swarm all over the place. There's exhibition skating and, and moonlight sleigh rides and dances and, and all the basics, like boys. Oh, do you know a lot of boys up there, Charlotte? Well, not exactly. That's why I wanted you to go with me. You have such a talent for getting acquainted. I mean, you're so natural, well, they'd never suspect anything. <laughs> oh, oh, just a minute, Charlotte. My mother wants to talk to you. Hello, Charlotte. Are you sure you've checked with your parents and they won't mind an extra girl barging in on them? Oh, no, Mrs. Scott. They're crazy about Karen. You know, because she's so dependable. All right, dear, and thanks for inviting her. You're welcome, Mrs. Scott. Bye. Bye-bye. Now, darling, I want you to behave yourself up there and be careful. I think you better take a little extra money in case of emergency. Okay, I'll bring my Christmas money. And if anything comes up, be sure and phone us. Okay, I promise. Oh, but it's long distance, so I won't call you unless I'm absolutely dying. <laughs> <laughs> Is Karen in Ski Valley yet? No, she'll arrive this afternoon. Gee. It must be neat, 
sleeping on a train all night with nobody to yell at you. <laughs> yell at you? Well, sure. I don't think the porter tells you to brush your teeth or to turn out your light at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Honey, uh, when uh, Karen left, did you have a little talk with her about, uh, you know? Daddy means this. Did you tell her not to kiss any strange boys? <laughs> you don't have to exaggerate the situation. Dear, stop worrying. Hmm. Hey, maybe Karen will get caught in the snow and her feet will be frozen. Then she'll get gangrene. She'll marry the rich doctor who cuts off all her toes. Maybe. <laughs> Client of your father's. Had to entertain him. Took your little sister with them. Oh, boy. Well, I think I better call home right away. But, dear, why aren't Charlotte's parents there? Well, it was some kind of a mix-up. Well, what do I do now, Mom? Tell her about Mrs. Sloat. Oh, Mom, there's a Mrs. Sloat here, and, and she's real reliable. She used to be a practice. Nurse. Yeah, she used to be a practicing nurse. <laughs> anyway, it's only for two days. I'll be home Sunday. I don't like the idea of Charlotte's parents not being there. Well, I don't know what we can do about it now. Behave yourself, Karen. Oh, I will, Mom, I will. And if we meet any boys, don't worry. We won't even talk to them. <laughs> okay, I'll call you if there's an emergency. Bye-bye. You know, Karen, listening to you talk to your mother, I I can't figure out whether you're the squarest girl I know or the smartest. <laughs> Honey, I think you should have told Karen to come right home. It's just for two days, dear. Yeah, but why all of a sudden would the girl's parents not be there? Karen distinctly said they would. That's the only reason we let her go. I know, honey, but it wasn't her fault that Charlotte's parents had to leave. Yeah. I guess those things happen. Besides, they do have a nurse up there. Nurse, she's sick. You keeping something from her? She's had a skiing accident. Honey, she's their housekeeper, and I'm sure she's a very reliable person. Now you stop worrying. If anything comes up, you know Karen will do the right thing. I hope so. <laughs> Realize we've been here for two whole days and we haven't met any boys yet. I'm just happy being up here and and enjoying nature. Well, if boys aren't part of nature, I don't know what is. <laughs> Dear Charlotte, I've had a lot of fun anyway. But it's not over. Tonight's the night. Everyone goes to the rat skeller after skating. Now there's where to meet boys. You brought your skates, didn't you? Oh, sure. Sure, they're right over here. Boy, wait till they see us skating. Mimi packed them for me. <laughs> Guess we're just going to have to save our ammunition for the dance tonight. <laughs> It's just not Tuesday Weldish. <laughs> oh, but that dress, that's Tuesday Weldish. Oh, it'll look great on you. On me? Oh, sure. This is Ski Valley, not a kitty's matinee. <laughs> Come on. Hello, <laughs> about this dress, Charlotte. Do you really think it looks all right? All right? Well, Karen, it looks beautiful. I never knew you could look so... So dangerous. Well, I don't feel dangerous, and I don't know about spending all my emergency money on a dress. Well, it's your own money. Anyway, our train leaves at 10 in the morning. What could come up? Well, I guess you're right. Do you notice anything different about me? 
Oh, just that your eyelashes don't exactly match. <laughs> match. I'm wearing Mrs. Sloat's perfume. Mrs. Sloat? Don't knock it. She told me she sprinkled some on a letter once, and it brought Mr. Sloat all the way back from New York. <laughs> May I serve Madame a cocktail? Oh, he means you. Oh, me? Uh, a cocktail? Oh, 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 no thanks. We're having champagne later. We can... How about a hot chocolate? Oh, yes, two hot chocolates. He thinks you're a woman. Oh, see that boy? The one with the suntan? Oh, which one? They all have suntans. Oh, that one coming down the stairs. It's Joe Slater, and that boy with him? Well, he's from Los Angeles, too. Oh, aren't they just too much? Karen, we just have to make them notice us. How? Well, we'll think of something. Oh, hey, look. Hey, look, they're coming this way. Karen, you to do something. We can't let him get away. Charlotte, I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Charlotte, where have you been? We're going to miss our 10 o'clock train. Better start packing. I've been doing a little research, and I found out that Joe Slater and his friend are taking the 11 o'clock train. So? So, this is our chance. We change reservations and take the same train they're on. But I already told my parents I'd be taking the regular excursion train home. So call your parents and tell them you'll arrive home an hour later. I'll go change the ticket. Oh, but Charlotte, I can't. <laughs> You're taking a later train. Why aren't you taking the train you're supposed to take? Well, Mom, things got all complicated and... And it's too late to take it now. I'll tell you all about it when I get home. All right. And take a cab when you get here. Yes, dear. Yes. Goodbye. Is Karen in some kind of trouble? No, she's just taking a later train. She'll tell us all about it when she gets home. Boy, she must be in real big trouble if she's afraid to tell you over the phone. Me need to wash. A wipe. <laughs> Instead of words, I should change the tickets. You did get them, didn't you? Well, yeah, I got them, but... For what? Well, you see, our original tickets were excursion fare. You know, a special rate. And? And the tickets for the later train were regular price. And I only had enough money for one full fare. So? Well, so it's simple. I bought you a half fare ticket. <laughs> we're just going to have to figure some way to convince them you're under 13. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlotte, but I will not get on that train in your 12-year-old sister's clothes. How can we borrow the money from Mrs. Sloat? She took the day off when she knew we were leaving. I don't even know where to get in touch with her. Why do I have to use the half-fare ticket? Why don't you? Karen, I wasn't the one who spent my emergency money on a new dress. And I wasn't the one who spilled the hot chocolate all over it. And I wasn't the one who... Forget it. <laughs> Maybe if I wire my parents, they might send me the money. Wouldn't get here in time. The train leaves in 20 minutes. Oh, come on. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in Idaho? <laughs> Walk like a kid, not like Natalie Wood. I forgot how. Look, don't be. <laughs> this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. I'll never get away with it. Oh, yes, you will. Why, you're the best actress in the whole school. You tell the conductor the truth when he comes. Are you out of your skull? You want to get thrown off the train? But it's wrong cheating the railroad. Send them the money when you get home. <laughs> oh, here comes the conductor. 
Here, take this and I'll do the talking. <laughs> May I see your tickets, please? Oh, sure. All right, one and a half to Los Angeles. How old is your sister? My sister is just 11 years old. <laughs> Twelve. In fact, you know, she's tall for her age. Our whole family's tall. And dumb, too. Fine. You said you saw me skating. What'd you think of my figure eights? Your figure eights? <laughs> oh, oh, they're great! Oh, they're wild! <laughs> you wouldn't be putting me on, would you? Oh, no. Karen and I, we both thought they were wild. <laughs> Karen? Is that your name? I'm Charlotte Burns, and this is Karen Scott. We go to Beverly. Well, hi. I'm Joe Slater, and this is Tom Ingersoll. We go to Cal. Can you actually fall right down in the ice? I was leading the competition. I not only lost the race, but I dampened my spirits as well. <laughs> uh, your ticket, miss? Oh, you have my ticket, conductor. <laughs> what space, miss? Uh, car 210, seats 14 and 16. Sorry, miss. That space is taken by this young lady and her sister. Fair and a half to loss... <laughs> I haven't had anyone try and pull that one on me since 1948 on the old CB&O. Midget and his wife. What's this all about? I'm afraid, young lady, you're going to have to pay a full fare. I don't have it, sir. You don't have it? Well, you... See, I bought this real slinky dress with my emergency money, and and I spilled hot chocolate all over it and ruined it. And I had to buy a half fare ticket. And I'm sorry. It was all my fault. Oh, please don't throw me off the train, sir. I don't know anybody in Idaho. <laughs>
Now, yes. Got it. Good. This is Cobb Residence. What's Karen gloped up now? Hi, Mr. Scott. I'm holding a couple of kids out in my cap. One of them says she lives here. What you holding them for? Ransom? It's a little matter of $6.90 cab fare. You can't take chances. You take kids like that, you let them go in the house for the fare. Half the time they don't come back, you're left pushing doorbells all over the neighborhood. <laughs> you can come in now, kids! <laughs> there you are. Oh, thanks a lot, Mr. Scott. Oh, honey. Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Mom. Everything all right? No, it was just awful. Who are you? Oh, oh, this is Joe Slater. This is my dad and my mom and my sister Mimi. Hi, hi Joe. Hello, Pleased Joe. Pleased to meet you. If it hadn't been for Joe, I wouldn't be here. For heaven's sake, what happened? Oh, Dad, don't put that away. I owe Joe $21.74. <laughs> that would be uh, too rude of me to inquire just why you owe this young man $21.74? Well, you see, sir. Yes. Gosh, it, it is kind of hard to explain, isn't it? <laughs> Mother, it was just awful. It really was. I was just miserable all the time. And if Joe hadn't paid the rest of my fare, I, I, I would have just died right there in the club car. This is the first time we let you take a trip by yourself, and you get into all this ridiculous trouble. But, Mom, you... Karen, don't... you go up to your room and stay there until I come up and talk to you. Dad. Steve, she's very upset about this whole thing. But since when has being upset over something you've done wrong gone out of style? Mom, is it okay if I go next door and have supper at Marianne Hanser's? Why do you want to do that? Well, I don't like being around when you're being mean to Karen. I'm not being mean, I'm being fair. Well, I don't like being around when you're being fair either. <laughs> Mimi, we're all having dinner together. Yes, Daddy. Finished? Just about. Dad, this weekend was just about the dumbest thing I ever did. I'm really sorry. I know. You've said that all through dinner. But I am. Well, I guess it was quite an experience. But uh, have you learned anything from it? I learned not to listen to people like Charlotte. Oh, it's convenient, isn't it? Blame it all on Charlotte. But you were the one who thought she was the neatest girl you'd ever met. You bought that dress, and you were the one who tried to come back half fair. Hmm? Guess I should have listened to you when you said I shouldn't go. Maybe. Honey, remember when I let you get your driver's license? Mm hmm Well, you took a test. There were certain signs that you had to recognize. Signs that told you when to slow down, that warned you of merging traffic or uh, dangerous intersections, right? Well, that's all your mother and I are trying to do. Get you to recognize the danger signs so that you'll know which is the right road, when to slow down, when to put your brakes on, when to stop. Believe me, honey, if, if you don't pay any attention to those signs out on the freeway or in life, you're going to get clobbered. Yes, Dad. I want you to uh, pay me back for that ticket out of your allowance. And uh, suppose we put you in dry dock for a while. Fair? Fair. You know, Dad, it's funny. You and Mom spend half your life telling me things, and, and I spend half of mine not listening. Well, in the future, maybe if uh, we talked a little less and you listened a little harder, we just might make it. It's a deal, Dad. Okay. Good night, honey. Good night, Dad. Pleasant dream.